So in these next couple of videos, I'm going to go through different types of summary sheets that will work with the Gensum spreadsheet and being able to bring in all the data. So I mentioned, you know, the sub summary sheets, they have to be set up in order for the code on the Gensum sheet to extract the data from it. So I've set up uh, right now five different types and so this will go through this video will go through type one and in the following videos I'll go through the other types. And so um, the sub summary files themselves are well can be found in the standards. So the ODOTCAD standards folder, ODOT, Gensum, standard Excel summaries. So you'll see all of them in here. And um, so I'm gonna open up a, a type one and I already have it open and I have one that's filled out so it's it makes more sense when you look at it so this is a, a type 1 summary sheet and so before I dive into it you know there's a similarity between all the types and that's you know what data what's the minimum data I need to extract in order to fill out the general summary sheet well I need an item code or an item item number. I need an additional description if the item has an additional description. I need a page number that a quantity should go on. I need quantities and I need split numbers for what quantities go with what split number. And when I say split number I'm talking about a funding split. So so that's what I need. That's the bare minimum I need. And so what the code needs to be able to do is it needs to be able to find all that data on the sub summary sheets. And so I've tried to write it in a, a most dynamic way that I possibly could so that you guys as end user have the ability to customize the sheets to your liking and it still would work. So first thing, the way you could tell what type is if you look at A1, cell A1, it'll have the type listed right there. So you'll see a one that tells me I'm in a type one summary sheet. And so you might s see this is similar to s sub summary sheets you've seen. Um, this is set up to be to fit on half of a sheet. So it's already sized. So it could be the bottom or top half of, of a sheet in a micro using an ODOT sheet cell. And so all my sheets, all the sheets I've set up, um, they have a, they are protected, but there's no password, so you can easily unprotect and make your changes. The only reason why I do protect them is so that you don't accidentally delete a formula that's needed. So to fill out these sheets, you'll notice that there's some stuff above the sheet. So I just this is the sheet that you would bring into these this range is what you would bring into a microstation. Everything else is 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 kind of useful for the code to find data. So it's it's pretty simple. Um, you see page number. So you list what page number this goes on to. And um, if you are a consultant that uses um, cheat codes and pen tables to switch those numbers, um, if you put the sheet code in here it will still work if you're using auto table you know still bring that in and that well using auto table that doesn't doesn't matter it's, it brings it into the general summary sheet and then when the code fills out your your gen sum sheet and that sheet has the page number listed it'll all it'll put the the um, sheet code that you listed here so just want to mention that does work and if you don't know what I'm talking about you don't have to worry about it then so that's one thing that the code needs to grab and so it's looking in column B so column B has you know this has to stay in column B for the code to, to look because it's only searching column B and so you'll find that page number and then you notice split number and then for every row you put in a split number so you normally you know fill out your quantities here like normal like if you've used fill out any sub summary sheet it should look like this you should know 
you have an item number here and you put a quantity so one thing I want to mention is that each row it needs to only be one split and so you know sometimes there's a case where this might have gone to do two different splits you will have to split them out to separate rows so that each row only has one split and that way the code can know that this quantity goes with this split um, and if you're not doing that already it, it's kind of the way you should be doing it because it helps you even if you weren't doing this automated method when you go to file the gensum it'll make it a lot easier to know what quantities go where rather than coming back you know a month after you did this sheet and trying to remember how much should go on what split so it's easier it's faster so if you're not doing that you know the code for the, to use this process you have to do it like that uh, and so another thing is these are now formulas these three that get filled out when you fill out the item code so you'll see there's an item code listed here that item code filled out this this uh, cell this cell and this cell so you know filled out the three digit item code filled out the description of that item and then put the units in and so you'll notice there underneath there there's an additional description and so if I threw an additional description it's going to add that which it didn't which makes me think that I might have my calculation set to manual so <laughs> that's my bad if you set automatic like it should be you'll see that it it fills that out as you fill it out and then uh, these other two rows are, are kind of like helper rows like if you had a rate or thickness you know you can use that and you can put a formula down here to use that rate so that's those aren't needed by the code but if you wanted you could so and if you needed to add then now the cool thing is that this is the code is very dynamic so if you needed to add rows you're more than welcome to do so you can add rows delete rows you know anywhere you can add them here delete them here same thing with columns if, if you wanted more columns or less columns go ahead insert and delete away the code won't matter won't care it's not like hard coded to a certain column which is very nice on the flip side since it's like that the way the code extracts data is it looks for the item code it finds this item code and so it knows this row has all item codes in it and what it does then is it basically says where's the last column in this row that has data in it so for right now it would be this one so then it knows I need to grab data you know from here to here if I put an item code way out here, say I was trying to hold hold something, now it is protected, so I'll turn off the. If for some reason I put a item number over here, and I threw some quantity here, the code is dynamic, so it will find that and it will still bring that in, and quant and you'll get that quantity brought in to your gensum, which you'll see. In other videos, so that's something you know, just to be aware of. I don't know if that really happens too much, but I just want to mention since the code is so dynamic that that can happen. And then you notice that there is a, a total down here, and that's what the code looks for in column B to know where's the page total because you know these are typically rounded, and these are the values that you want put in as under in the page quantity section of your gensum sheet. So Hopefully you guys understand how to fill out this sheet. Obviously, if you don't, if you wanted different columns here, you can change them. This one's set up for more of a pavement calculations, but you know you could set up your own sheets for different things using this format, and the code will find everything. That's it's nice that it's so dynamic. Now, type one, I can repeat this, and as long as there's one blank row in between a sheet or 
I guess table, whatever you want to call it, the code can extract all all the data from from multiple sheets. So this setup with four, it could have more. It doesn't matter. That's just what it's set up. So you know you can fill out. You know this could be one page. This could be another page, and so on and so forth. You could copy this sheet and make another sheet in this file. You could have another file and and it'll be able to grab all that data. Um, I wanted to mention formulas and then that should be all for, for type 1. So you'll see these formulas. I mentioned in the previous video about these named ranges. So these formulas have are in using these named ranges. There's one query item named and item. So those two named ranges is what creates a, a link to to this uh, o dot uh, item master add in. So you'll see there's a link right there. So those. Um, named range is what creates this link. So, just wanted to mention that. Um, I'm not going to go in detail. It's a pretty long formula. Um, I guess if you wanted to, you could look at it, or if you had questions about how it works, you can let me know. But that's how these three get filled out. Is with those formulas, um, and so that's why, you know, these formulas don't work unless you install the add-in because it's these formulas are hitting the add-in so just wanted to you know mention that aspect of it as it ties it together and um i think i mentioned in a previous video this way you don't have the item a copy of the item master in every single sub summary file and that's that's not desired. So they're all hitting the same. So you know your all all your subsystem sheets are on the same version of the item master. So all right, that's type one. I'll go over the type two in the next video.